but it's that time to talk markets. And of course, my colleague, Efenge Kop, is in the house. And I have joining me via phone, Equities Trader, Planet Capital Limited, Mr. Paul Ozum. Mr. Paul, the market is positive. The all share index is high, 0.15%. Well, not really, not very significant, but at least it's positive. How does this come to you? <laughs> What's your reaction to this? <laughs> well, um, today there was, I think it's Boaz Smith uh, gained um, 2.63%, um, and most of the heavy uh, high cap stock in the market did not um, record any significant price change. So Boaz Smith is the one which, um, it is, um, which controls the significant portion of market uh, weight. And was capable of um, pulled the market up by this uh, margin of 0.16%. And this is coming at the time wherein uh, we just saw inflation numbers, of, of, uh, as, which came out for last month of July, 19.64%, um, which is not a good news. Um, we, uh, as we, the fear now is um, if there may be further um, rate hike by the, the central bank. Uh, in subsequent uh, monetary uh, policy meetings, um, not understand that market sales gains. We always just saw it's a marginal gain. We don't think that this gain will be sustained. We just think um, in the future days ahead, some few uh, more days of um, daily sentiments and some few days of um, market gains. So we see as we we see as fit that uh, by the time results of um, the companies that are paying their dividends. Um, the right, assets, units, guarantee, that's GTCO and um, UBA, when they are when they published, um, that would help to spike up, spike up market confidence. I must thank you so much for your time, Mr. Paul Lozom. Interesting uh, submission from you there. Do I enjoy the rest of your day? Thank you. Uh, take it up from where he stopped. And of course, I, I think you're also taking us through the African continent. First, let me ask you, what's Kenyan market looking like today after the elections? <laughs> it's, it's really interesting. Kenyan market is trading in the upper terrace. Wow, it's green. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, the election this time, I think it, it was the bad of, of you know, real violence. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, uh, honestly, I think investors... They were so happy. <laughs> I, I found it. Kenyan market, you know, is moving 0.10% Wow, great upward. stuff. Yes. Great. Yes, great. Uh, you know, after the announcement of yeah. uh, the new president. But uh, when we come back to the Nigerian market, uh, I think it's a bit of a relief that we have this uh, positive trading after nearly one week of uh, low trades. But that is, uh, the question is, will the market sustain it? And that is where the doubt is. So it is not a question of uh, you know looking at it uh, uh, you know ordinarily as it is. What fundamental or uh, you know environmental uh, condition you know is the market you know going through? You find out that the support level seems to be very very weak, and uh, we are reporting inflation now. You see, almost at twenty percent. So. What does that mean to uh, you know savings and investments? Is it positive or negative? So that, that that's the issue relating to the exchange rates of the naira. Mm. Why is the naira so weak after all these years that we've been using our reserves to support the value of the naira? So we have so many things you know walking around and then bringing investments uh, opportunities or investments uh, you, you know downward. Having said that, let's go back to African markets, and I've said the Kenyan market trade in the positive territory, 0.10%, because the investors have returned to the stock markets after the general elections, and they are happy with uh, what they have seen. The same positive trade we see in South Africa. South African market closes 0.96%, almost 1%. Many of them are buying government bonds and uh, equities. The, com the, the, the economy is, uh, you know, gradually getting up after the coronavirus and other things. You know how deep it was, you no know, pressure. In Botswana, market is also positive, 0.36%. So you can talk about market recovery in many of the African stock exchanges, including Nigeria. So that's uh, positive. Um, because the economies right now, they are weak. I mean African economies. So the recovery beat 
we see big companies are helping. You know, to, then the second half of the year that we are moving, we are not too far away to the end of it. And so companies, factories are beginning to put things together to All see right. how they will do with the, the sales of their products in the last uh, quarter of, of the year. year. So that's uh, reasonable. But the question is, will these exchanges sustain this level of uh, achievement that we've seen? So we wait to see. Thank you so much, my colleague, Efion Ekop. Do enjoy the rest mm -hmm. of your day. It's my pleasure, to. All right, Ishin, she has struggled for direction today as they grappled with worries of our global growth following weak Chinese data that knocked oil prices and commodity-linked currencies. The dollar briefly hit a one-week high as investors piled back into the safe haven currency. While the Austrian euro and Chinese yuan buckled, euro stock 50 features and FTSE features both added 0.3%, indicating a strong start for European stocks. But S&P 500 features and Nasdaq features dipped. MSCI's broadest index of Asian Pacific shares outside Japan edged up 0.1%, recovering from Monday's losses. MSCI's benchmark index has gained 5% from a year low, but is still down 15%. Uh, so far this year, Chinese stocks failed to hold on to early gains as growth concerns remain after data showed economic activities and credit expansion slowed sharply in July, prompting the central bank to unexpectedly cut interest rates. The blue chip CSI 300 slipped 0.1% after dipping yesterday. China slashed holdings of U.S. Treasuries for a seventh consecutive month in June. That's the latest from the U.S. Treasury Department data. Released with investors closely tracking this measure in wake of tensions between the world's two largest economies. And uh, between the two largest economies involving Taiwan, China's stash of U.S. government debts dropped to $967.8 billion in June, the lowest since May 2010, when it held $843.7 billion. In May, the world's second biggest economy had $980.8 billion in treasuries. China's herd of U.S. debt has been has seen multiple 12 years lows that uh, the last few months. There is an added wrinkle between U.S. and China relations involving Taiwan, ourselves, and our governed uh, island, uh, China claims as its own. But that is not reflected yet in the data which covers the June numbers. Earlier this month, U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan, the highest level of U.S. official, to the, visit the territory in 25 years, prompting China's outrage. Backless lowers its benchmark as Brent forecast uh, its Brent price forecast today by eight dollars per barrel for 2022 and 2023, as it expects a large surplus of crude oil over the near term due to resilient Russian supplies. The British bank now sees Brent crude averaging one hundred and three dollars this year and next, and U.S. West Texas Intermediate to average ninety nine dollars for both years. The recent move lowers in prices uh, is primarily a timing issue as resilient Russian supplies before the European Union sanctions kicks in later this year have uh, coincided with elevated concerns of a broader slowdown, the bank said in a note. EU leaders in late May agreed to impose an embargo on Russian oil imports that will take full effect by the end of the year and will ban all Russian refined products two months later. Well, oil prices on international market fell today as bleak economic data from top crude buyers China renewed fears of a global recession. A U.S. West Texas intermediate crude recorded a price dip of 0.74% to hit $88.75 per barrel. Brent sells at $94.15 per barrel, registering a downward price margin of 1%. Bonnie Light's performance continues with its trading value of $118.10 per barrel, with a 3.25% drop in price for the OPEC basket. Crude oil dealers offer $103.20 per barrel with a price uptick of 1.89%.